Are you ready for part two of Chaos, Confusion, and Lies? That's what we're looking at again today on Insights. Dan, welcome back one more time. Thanks for having me as always. So tell us about this t-shirt. Oh, the Burt Macklin. Okay, so have you heard of the show Parks and Rec? Only because of my son. Okay, fair enough. So there's a character in that show named Andy, and my wife likens me to him a lot just because he's a very goofy person. Um, so off camera, I'm a very goofy person. Uh -huh. I like to have a lot of fun, as you already know. We've seen it, yeah. Um, and so he has this alternative persona in the show called Burt Macklin, mm. and he'll just randomly just kind of go into this persona and just throw some sunglasses on and say, this looks like it's a job for Burt Macklin, <laughs> FBI. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's where that kind of comes from. So Awesome. So it's kind of like going into his uh, superhero kind yeah, of... Yeah, exactly. Okay. It's just a total joke. Persona. Um, yeah. He has another <clears throat> persona called Johnny Karate. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so he trains little kids on how to be ninjas and everything. It's, it's a pretty funny thing. So. Well, thanks for giving us an insight already. <laughs> wow. But... Hey, we're going to jump back into some stuff yeah. here, you know, and uh, we have got a culture of lies, but I'm connecting it to confusion, misleading information. It's not always that somebody said this or the media said this mm -hmm. and the exact opposite was true. That does happen, but it's more of like what's being left out and why mm -hmm. we have, we keep receiving a certain narrative and yet fundamentally as we looked at in the last insights, it's what Ravi Zacharias um, has said for years. Mm -hmm. It's that when God is absent, chaos is the norm. And mm -hmm. that's what we're seeing in our culture. Higher levels of chaos than ever in 2020, mm -hmm. or at least not for a long time. And so this is like a powerful thing we need to pay attention to. So if we can, um, I'm hoping that we can, yeah. uh, that we can... Uh, unpack a little bit more of the confusion in our culture mm -hmm. uh, on a number of topics. Um, and then if we can try to help point people to the, the way out of this. Yeah. So in light of what you said, um, you know, we got this book in front of us, Culture of Lies by Timothy Zebel. And wanna, there's two quotes on the back that I just, again, will kind of fare with what we're saying here. One is by the second president of the United States, John Adams. There has been more new air propagated by the press in the last 10 years than in a an hundred years before 1798. Hmm. The other one is by the third president, Thomas Jefferson. Nothing can now be believed which is seen in a newspaper. Truth itself becomes suspicious by being put into the polluted vehicle. So what we're talking about here, chaos, confusion, lies. Mm -hmm. It's nothing new. Yep. But boy, it sure feels uh, at a higher level of intensity mm -hmm. when uh, we just look at what's been going on, you know, this year with this beginning with an impeachment and then you got the pandemic and we can talk a little bit more about COVID and stuff and other topics. But then, you know, you've got all the stuff that's going on with the race riots. It's like, wow, is there a lot of stuff going on? Mm -hmm. um, I just want to mention that this book mostly covers since President Trump's been in office mm -hmm. and highlights fake news. The, the subtitle here, Understanding Fake News and Its Spiritual Ramifications, because mm -hmm. there are spiritual ramifications because of all this. There's ramifications with our relationship with God if we're believing lies mm -hmm. um, individually, but as a nation when there's whole like cultural lies that are being propagated. Mm -hmm. So a helpful book and it even gets into fact checkers mm -hmm. and even how fact checkers have gotten it wrong yep. on many occasions. So anyway, very interesting. Now, um, with that said, let's, uh, let's jump into kind of the confusion and in some cases probably lies mm -hmm. that have gone on um, at the epicenter of the epicenter of the of the coronavirus pandemic in New York City. Mm -hmm. So if people want to look this up online, the name of the video, the interview is called The Epicenter Nurse. Mm -hmm. And the subtitle is A Conversation with Erin Marie Oshesky. Mm -hmm. Okay, now she had had prior um, experience in hospitals in the military as well as in Florida. She finds herself 
at Elmhurst Hospital and she's looking at all this stuff. Now we're putting this mostly under the umbrella of confusion, like what mm -hmm. in the world is going on here? But, um, but you know, she gets into a lot more details if you wanna, wanna take a look at it. But first off, she clearly shows they were putting COVID positive patients uh, in the same rooms, on the same floor with COVID negative mm -hmm. patients. Okay, if that's not bad enough, she also holds up uh, a document, actually kept it on her phone. She holds this up and shows how a patient tested negative like two or three times for COVID-19. But at the top, it says COVID positive or COVID confirmed. Mm. And it's like, what in the world is going on here? And all I'm, I'm saying at this point, although we could talk about motives and what's going on behind the scenes, you know, we could talk about that kind of thing all day, is that there just seems to be confusion mm -hmm. going on here, which again, when God is present, the truth comes forward. God is about life. He wouldn't cause this kind of confusion. It's something mm -hmm. that's an activity of the enemy. Mm -hmm. um, she goes on to talk about first-hand information that they were telling patients that if they don't get on a ventilator, they're not going to live. She mm -hmm. said, the observations showed you that once patients got on a ventilator, their chances of walking out of that hospital were slim. Mm -hmm. It's like, what in the world mm -hmm. is going on here? When your doctor's telling you, you got to get on this ventilator, most people, of course, would just say yes. And she was like horrified that this was that this was going on. And she, she there's so much in this video, mm -hmm. but one other thing that sticks out to me is that she actually is recording one of the doctors and it's right on the video. You hear the doctor's voice saying to her, well, I expect everybody um, that's here in, in the hospital, meaning COVID positive mm -hmm. patients, I expect all of them to die. And then he dials back a little bit and he says, well, you know what I mean, like 90% of people die. Mm -hmm. Now, Aaron, Olszewski, she came from a hospital in Florida where she said, we were seeing zero patients die. Mm -hmm. Like what in the world is going on here? So we just see this kind of kind of con confusion and um, you know, it's just kind of crazy what's, what I believe has continued to go on as we've not really drilled down on the facts. Mm -hmm. Now in the previous video, we talked about uh, Alex Berenson's book, mm -hmm. Unreported Truths About COVID and Lockdowns, and mm -hmm. we got into all that, that detail and so forth. It just seems like we're still having a hard time just really circling up on what the data and the science is saying. I think part of that is, is because the media keeps telling us, well, so-and-so is not following the science or not mm -hmm. following the data. Well, actually, I believe they're the ones that mm -hmm. are not following it. So anyway, there's a lot of confusion here and it's evidence, as Ravi Zacharias highlights, it's evidence that God has distanced himself. When God is there, the truth goes forth. When God is there, people speak the truth on this topic mm -hmm. or, or uh, gospel truths or a hundred other truths and the truth frees, frees people up. So Than, just thinking about you and where you live and your interactions and so forth, like where do you really see this whole area of chaos, confusion, lies? Where do you see that coming forth um, in your relationships? So definitely in my generation, because there's two angles I would let, I kind of see it happening, right? One's on a country side perspective, which is I see the country in just a total state of chaos and confusion because we have so many pieces of information that contradict each other and do not harmonize. So even just on the COVID-19 level, we have person X saying this, person Y saying this, but then we have person Z saying this, all being targeted towards you. And you're sitting here thinking, none of these harmonize together. They can't all be true. Where do I, where do I go? So that's part of it. I think the other side of the equation is on like on a more, my, my generation standpoint, the people that I talk to, um, there's just confusion over all over the place because at least from where I stand, we've embraced this postmodern thought process where truth is relative, subjective, and reality itself is bended by the perception of the perceiver, meaning I could ask you to, what is two plus two equal? And you're right if you say five even though objectively speaking, it's four. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of confusion comes from that. Hmm. So this postmodern thing, you're seeing it just more or less take over your generation. Yes. Now I would say it made significant inroads in my generation, mm -hmm. even older than me. Mm -hmm. um, 
But yeah, there's a real issue when you cannot evaluate things using logic. Mm -hmm. You know, that this is false and here are the reasons why and this leads us to truth and here's here's why. I mean, especially our, our viewers that are, you know, Christians studying the Bible. Can you imagine if you're studying the Bible but you're not approaching it logically mm -hmm. and this means this, which means this? It's just not going to work. Well, even bringing it back to the gospel itself, mm -hmm. the amount of times that because you know me well enough at this point to know that I have no problem witnessing to a total stranger I meet on the street. Mm -hmm. The amount of times I have heard, well, I don't have to worry about that because I don't believe in it. Hmm. Wow. The, the, these people that embrace that postmodern thought process sincerely believe that mm -hmm. their own thoughts and beliefs dictate the reality, where at the end of the day, mm -hmm. if Christianity is true, whether or not you believe in it, mm -hmm. it affects you. Mm -hmm. And... So the implications it has on the gospel itself and the way we can deliver it, mm -hmm. I believe postmodern thought process is just a total mm -hmm. tool of the enemy, in my opinion. So how does that work if you're diagnosed with cancer? If you don't believe you have cancer, then you don't have to worry about it. Yeah, exactly. Or another one is try telling that to the bank account. Well, I believe <laughs> right. I have $2 million in my bank account, so <laughs> right. that's not going to work like that. Um, mm -hmm. So it definitely, I think that's a huge part of at least my perception on how I see the issue of lies and confusion going about. Mm -hmm. The other issue is at least me having gone through public school and university first to a certain extent, I came out of it being told what to think rather than how to think. Mm -hmm. and what I mean by that is I didn't come out with any critical thinking skills. Mm -hmm. I didn't come out with any wisdom. And what I mean by wisdom is the ability to assess information ask questions and come to a logical conclusion based off of that. Mm -hmm. um, I had to develop those skills and honestly those skills did not get developed until after I came to Christ. Mm. So I think those are the two facets of all the confusion and chaos, at least in my generation. Mm -hmm. Okay, Dan, so apparently people aren't thinking logically. I'm mm -hmm. assuming then that the default would be to make decisions more off of uh, emotions, what feels good in the moment, mm -hmm. you know, what I want versus what maybe is actually true. So if that all of that's correct, then how do you see, what kinds of decisions do you see that where this is being uh, impacted? So one of the ones that's most troublesome to me, for instance, is because it's infiltrated the church. And it's not until our generation has grown up and been kind of part of the church that you start seeing this postmodern thought of homosexuality in the church, for instance. Mm -hmm. um, another one would be, you know, decisions on what gender you are and your sexuality. Um, mm -hmm. Another one would just be, for instance, people walking away completely from the faith because they don't. Because it's not easy. It's not easy, and it, but mm -hmm. also just because, at the end of the day, they really think that what they believe is true but only to them. So it, it just kind of goes full circle all over the place. Mm -hmm. um, you know, one example that comes to my mind mm -hmm. is this um, young married couple. Um, I was at their wedding and, uh, you know, here they are a few years later, two kids later. And, um, you know, on one of their behalves, I'm not going to say mm -hmm. the, the husband or the wife, but one of them um, just decided that Life is supposed to be all about my fun, mm -hmm. all about what makes me feel good in the moment. My personal happiness mm -hmm. is how it was put to me. And it's like, it doesn't matter what we're doing in life. If my personal happiness is the ultimate reason why I'm deciding if I should do this or this, our lives are going to be a train wreck. Mm -hmm. And, you know, in this particular marriage, I'm praying that it won't end up as a train wreck. But at the moment, it's a train mm -hmm. train wreck, you know, filing for divorce and this kind of a thing. But it's all coming down to, um, and this couple would claim to be Christians, you know, it's all coming down to um, not saying the truth is I'm in a covenant relationship mm -hmm. with God and with my husband and wife. And we need to walk out that truth, meaning we get marriage counseling or we... I uh, have heart-to-heart -heart discussions on mm -hmm. everything until we work this through. What it is based on mm -hmm. is my feeling in the moment. Mm -hmm. You know, so I think this is actually much bigger and vital than what we're even suggesting so far. Yeah. And, and here's why. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, 
It talks about the abomination of desolation. It talks about the the son of perdition coming, um, the one of lawlessness. Mm -hmm. Okay, now lawlessness is what we're seeing so much of in our culture today, mm -hmm. and it's rooted in much of what we're talking about here. So, there's this fascinating verse in 2 Thessalonians 2 where it says that there's this delusion that will come. The restraint of the Holy Spirit is mm -hmm. removed. A delusion comes upon the world, upon culture. And it says fundamentally why people, why people are carried into this delusion. It says because they did not love the truth. Mm -hmm. If you're wrapped up into chaos and that's connected to confusion, and that's connected to lies, mm -hmm. That is the recipe for eventually making enough decisions in that direction that you end up coming out on the wrong side of this mm -hmm. thing, according to 2 Thessalonians 2, mm -hmm. where you actually end up being given over to destruction, the, mm -hmm. the lostness of your soul because of not loving the truth. You know, our best friend, Than, is the truth. Mm -hmm. Of course, the truth in Christ, but then as that goes layer after layer out into culture, the truth on every Everything. topic. Definitely, it, without truth, we cannot, there, there's nothing. We, at the end of the day, whether it's about COVID, whether it's about, you know, this whole BLM thing going on right now, mm -hmm. whether it's what how my wife and I will settle upon on a disagreement. Mm -hmm. If there is no truth, there's no way to reconciliation, to harmonization. There's no way mm -hmm. to anything but chaos and confusion. Right. Okay, so going back to Ravi's quote, mm -hmm. When God is absent, chaos is the norm, mm -hmm. okay? The inverse of that would be true. That we'll got, when God is present, peace is the norm. Mm -hmm. And we can say that's true in our own lives, our families, our communities, the whole nation, mm -hmm. if we are inviting God in. Let's talk about this a little bit more specifically. Um, we haven't probably been practical enough in the yeah. last couple of videos. So specifically, how do you invite God's presence back in to our, our lives, our families, our culture, our nation? Because clearly that is where this whole thing mm -hmm. has gone awry. And again, I don't want to be too redundant, but I even believe with things that are going on connected to Black Lives Matter, as well as with COVID-19 and all these other things that are headline news, that the reason we end up here in such confusion, chaos, um, things that are clearly destructive, mm -hmm. self-destructive, um, is because God is absent. Now, we just hit a biggie, uh, that biggie being that, well, we first have to understand that truth exists and we need to mm -hmm. embrace the truth. The Holy Spirit, in fact, is called the Spirit, Spirit of, truth. of Truth. So we know that his presence is connected to truth, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. But like what else, like what else would we do if we're really serious as believers, as a church, to actually see God's presence come in such a way that his shalom is dictating the day rather than chaos? How do we reconcile with the Lord? There's only one way, and that's through Jesus Christ. Um, I think first the church has to realize that a lot of, a lot of us inside the church, need to we need to repent realize that we can't look like the world and think like the world. Mm -hmm. And then we have to get back to the gospel itself, the true gospel, which is mm -hmm. the blood of Jesus Christ is what has cleansed us and bought us mm -hmm. redemption. Without that, right. we're hopeless. Exactly. Okay, so most churches that I've been a part of would... Um, say amen to all of that in terms mm -hmm. of the gospel, the blood of Christ, we're forgiven. Mm -hmm. But we're still not getting there in terms of influencing our cultures, uh, broader culture. Mm -hmm. We're not there in terms of more broadly inviting God back and seeing him come back. It seems like there's going to be you know, further steps, steps yeah. required. Again, it's a very broad point, strictly from the standpoint of, on the church, we have all these different things. I'm a very, I'm, I, you know me, I'm, a very, I'm very big on what do we need to do as the body of Christ to look at ourselves first before we look at the world. And, you know, we have things like the seeker sensitive, seeker sensitive movement, we have the prosperity gospel, and we have all these other fake gospels out there that will bring in people and does so it. They're bringing in people, but we, who we really need is to bring in the Lord. We need to bring in the Lord, but we also need... I say this gently, mm -hmm. <laughs> but 
with all these movements and false gospels we have going on, are we really just bringing in dead bodies into the church or are we bringing in people with new hearts? And that's where the power or comes. You, or once they get in, do they ever get a new heart? Exactly. You know? And so without these new hearts, without the regeneration, without being led by the Spirit, mm -hmm. the church can't do anything. We can put up all the flashy lights we want. We can hold hands and sing kumbaya all we want. But at the end of the day, nothing will change mm -hmm. until our, the church itself gets it right. Right. You know, and that really, like, has resonated with me and where I've been at for a long time, that culture will not change if the church itself is somehow mm -hmm. compromised, if the church itself is not declaring truth on every topic, as you said, starting with the gospel, but then moving into every other topic. Mm -hmm. You know, um, sexual perversion is rampant within the church mm -hmm. for a reason. And that would be if we haven't preached the truth and really moved into what we would call true biblical community and mm -hmm. pursuing righteousness together, we're going to live in that compromise. And so, you know, that's just one of, of many examples, mm -hmm. but we've got to, we've got to, I would say, we have got to uncover the culture of lies, even subtle things that we're believing mm -hmm. within the church and truly come to humility, repentance, um, crying out to God as we see this stuff that's wrong with ourselves, as you highlighted. It's like, first, well, what's going on in my heart? Mm -hmm. And it could be on any and every issue. The Holy Spirit's especially adept yes. at showing us specific issues. Yeah, I can definitely relate to, especially with having a, just off topic almost a little bit, but still on topic, just having my firstborn child has really caused me to see myself even de on an even deeper level to see how much of the old T hasn't died yet. Mm. And mm. again, it's just, the regeneration of the Holy Spirit is now helping me realize, oh, well, let's kill that part of Than even more mm. so that way Christ can live and mm. I can be a fa better father for my son. Mm -hmm. I'd like to point out too, though, that, and it kind of ties in with this, the other side of the equation is how we relate to non-believers. Because at the end of the day, there's telling somebody the truth and telling somebody the truth in love. Mm -hmm. And so there's a difference between, for instance, talking to somebody that is, a, is homosexual and saying, well, you're going to go to hell because you're gay. And, un, and honestly, understanding the fact that even if this person was not gay, they would still be a child of darkness, even if you got them to realize that it's wrong mm -hmm. because they still haven't repented and placed their faith in Christ. Mm -hmm. So having that perspective of how doctrinally speaking it mm -hmm. works, mm -hmm. And doing it in the way that Jesus himself has done it, we, we again, it's not going to work because you can't just bash people over the head with truth without... Right. And I think what's so key here is that we need truth, but like you said, there can be this sense or perception anyway mm -hmm. of just being blasted with truth, hit over the head with truth. But when the presence of God comes... Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit has this way of just like he's holy. And it's mm -hmm. like, whoa, what is this in my heart? And you need, I do believe you need preaching and I do believe you need the truth and so mm -hmm. forth like that. But there is just this sense when the Lord comes, oh my gosh, I know that this is wrong. I know I have done it. I don't, it doesn't matter almost what's being spoken to me at this mm -hmm. point because now I'm dealing with God directly. Exactly. And so we want to, you know, really invite that, that aspect into it. So kind of tying it all together here, I... You asked, you know, how do we, as the body of Christ, kind of help this whole situation with chaos, confusion, lack of truth, all this other stuff? And I think I myself as a believer and everybody else on an individual basis needs to really look inward before we look at the world and point our fingers at them and really ask, what do, what do I need to repent of? And then as a group, we need to collectively take a step back and understand that even if we see a false narrative out there in my opinion mm -hmm. we're still called to mourn with the mourners so with, for instance with the BLM movement going on I can mourn with my black brothers and sisters without agreeing with Black Lives Matter I can mourn with them and say I I embrace your pain I am here for you I love you even if they're not a Christian 
and show them the love of Christ mm -hmm. despite what they might be feeling. I can do that without saying, yeah, but what about all these statistics? Yeah, but what about all these things? And I think there's a very fine line that we as a body need to learn. Mm -hmm. So all that being said, I mean, in light of everything we've talked about the past few weeks, is there anything that you would kind of like to wrap it up with or kind of nail in the coffin with? You know, I, I do want to say that, you know, we've looked so much at um, confusion in culture. Again, what I would call ultimately destructive behaviors and decisions is uh, self-destructive as well as just broadly destructive. Um, I just want to help us clue into the truth. Mm -hmm. And that would be that Jesus said, you will know a tree by its fruit. Mm -hmm. So as we look at things in culture, what, of course, does the scripture say? And then look at, well, what is the fruit of this? I think we can navigate our culture. I think we can navigate ourselves, which is so important. And, mm -hmm. you know, again, within our churches to navigate through all kinds of issues if we look at the fruit of what these different ideas are, uh, are, are bringing about. Mm -hmm. um, it's just vital, vital stuff. So, well, Than, again, thank you. Yeah. And, uh, I look forward to being with you next time on Insights.